Here we are at Cheltenham Science Festival, start of the festival season, and I'm looking forward to what I always look forward to most at festivals. No, not that, and not music. I'm looking forward to that moment when you set out across a camping field of near identical tents, trying to find your tent. Now you may think I'm gonna calculate the probability of crawling into your own tent and not a similar looking tent that's already full of jugglers. But no, that's never happening to me again because what I always do now is get to a festival early and pitch my tent in the farthest away corner of the camping field. That way I know it's my tent because there aren't any other tents beyond it. Not only that, when everybody else has arrived and filled up the camping field with a grid of tents, I don't have to waste valuable festival time calculating what's the quickest route from here to my tent because all routes are the same length. Think about it. Suppose I've pitched my tent in the far northeastern corner of the field and I'm here in the southwestern corner. To reach my tent, I can either go eastwards and then north all along the east side, or I can go northwards and then east all along the north side. Or I can zigzag through the middle, but because the field is laid out as a grid, all those short sections of path that I go along must add up to the same as if I'd just gone along the sides. And yes, obviously the camping field is laid out as a rectangular grid. What kind of festivals do you go to? Suppose we have a small camping field that's only three tenths wide by four tenths long. Every route I take has to be three tent widths and four tent lengths, whatever order I do it in. Obviously, I'm assuming that every section of path I use will be taking me either northwards or eastwards towards my tent, because if I were to go southwards or westwards, that would be taking me back towards my starting point, and that would be crazy. I mean, I'd have to be drunk or on drugs to wander randomly around a camping field like that. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, where's the maths come in? Well, this is the good bit. Yes, every route across the camping field is the same length, but how many possible routes are there? Ah, and by varying my path every time, can I use all the possible routes over the course of a festival weekend? Well, even in this small three by four camping field, there's two possible routes around the perimeter and then a choice of routes zigzagging through the center. The easiest way to work out how many is to start at the tent and work backwards. So even from a position, only two sections of path away from my tent, I can have a choice of two routes. I can either go north and then east, or I can go east and then north. Both of those take me two sections of path. So I could mark on this intersection that I've got two possible routes, one north and one east. And then by working backwards, I could mark each intersection with a number of possible routes. So for example, if by going north, I reach an intersection with two possible routes, that gives me two. If by going east, I reach an intersection with one possible route, that gives me one, and then I can add those together and get three, and so on, all the way back to my starting position. And if you look at the diagonal rows on which I've marked the number of possible routes, you'll see that the pattern goes one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, four, six, four, one, and so on, all the way back to the starting position from which I find I have 35 possible routes. And you've probably already spotted this, these numbers are Pascal's triangle, which is not a surprise because we've been adding together adjacent numbers from the row above, which means that it's also the binomial theorem, which means that you can calculate your number of possible routes, no matter how big your camping field, no matter how many rows and columns of tents you have, you can calculate the number of possible routes. All you have to do is work out the simplest route in our case, the three by four field, that's four tent lengths plus three tent widths, giving us seven. Then you work out the number of possible combinations of either eastward or northward routes out of seven. So in this case, it's either the number of possible combinations of three or the number of possible combinations of four out of seven. Because whether you calculate the number of possible combinations of three out of seven, or the number of possible combinations of four out of seven, you get the same answer, 35, the answer we've already got. This is sometimes called seven choose three, or seven choose four, and you get it by having seven factorial divided by four factorial times three factorial. This means that however big your camping field, if it was 100 tenths by 100 tenths, to get the number of possible routes from here to the furthest corner where your tent is, 
you divide 200 factorial by 100 factorial times 100 factorial, giving you an answer which is too big for my calculator to work out as it happens. Even, even a field of 10 tenths by 10 tenths gives you 184,756 possible routes from the festival to your own tent, which is probably too many for me to manage in one festival weekend. Of course, there's only one tent that matters here at Cheltenham Science Festival. That's the head squeeze tent. I just have to calculate how many possible routes there are for me to get to it. Luckily, you don't have to. You can just subscribe with one click. Yeah. <laughs>